Okay. <laughs> Woo. Oh my God, I'm here. Wow, look at that. My third eye is all lit up. Maybe we can adjust that light a little. There we go. <laughs> oh. 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 How interesting. So, hi everyone. I'm sorry that I'm starting a little late. Uh, Facebook kept bumping me out. I don't know what's going on with the new Facebook live stream concept, but um, it's not working for me as well as the old version did. And hi, Kat. <laughs> hi. Um, and so I got to tell you, I'm here in my nursery and you got, uh, because it's kind of threatening on and off, threatening rain today. And um, so I don't want to be outdoors and it's super buggy. You know, I have a fan here in my nursery that kind of keeps the bugs off me. But um, I, um, let's see. Oh, look at that. There we go. That's better. Um, I wanted to um, be here because you guys have seen since you know, like April, me in this greenhouse, we've been growing, growing, growing. And I got to tell you, I am not a gardener. Like my brother is a gardener in the family. I'm the landscaper. And uh, so normally I set everything up and then he's like, my brother can, he just like looks at his seed and it becomes a luscious bearing plant. And uh, hi, Jacinda. Hi, Nazi. Hi, Kat. Uh, we're just waiting for Kit to join us. I know he was looking. Uh, and again, my apologies for like keeping you all waiting. I, For those of you who were, the uh, Facebook kept bumping me off the live stream. So I'll tell you, if we're in the middle of live streaming and we get bumped off, then that'll be it for today. Because, um, but I'll go ahead and record the meditation and put it in the free program in my online school, which uh, here. Let me. There we go. I'm putting it here. So if you want to access any of the previous uh, meditations, um, this entire series and the learn to receive messages as well as my, ah, there are mosquitoes in here. Curse you. Um, as well as my telekinesis and spoon bending skills classes are all available for free, uh, in the online school. So you can go back and watch them. And I have some additional stuff that, uh, that is not here on Facebook. Um, in those programs as well as other stuff. So, um, yeah, so if I get bummed off, I'll just do it separately there. So today is the final class for this series. Um, and I feel pretty bittersweet about it. You know, we started this together um, when the quarantine was first going into place even a little before anyone was quarantined. And so I'm ruling my pants down. I'm getting bit on the ankles, but you know what's going to happen. As soon as we start the energy work, all the bugs will go away. So we'll get to that pretty fast. Um, we started all this together. And when I started this and the Wednesday night learned to receive messages, it was for the very specific purpose that anyone who wants has easy tools available to you on how to make use of the fact that the frequencies in our planet are shifting and that, um, you know, people are able to do things they haven't done before. But if you don't know how to connect with it, how to manage it, how to make use of it, 
you know, then what's the point of having a shifting planet? So it's to help anyone who wants to be fully empowered to uh, shift with our planet. Hmm. Yeah, I have a lot of work to do here. Uh, sorry, I got distracted by ants carrying eggs. Hmm. I'll deal with that. Um, I love animals, but I do not love mosquitoes and ants in my garden. <laughs> but the spiders are very sacred here. There's spider webs everywhere. I, ugh, I walk through them every day. So I feel like we've achieved our purpose. We now have a situation where any of you who wants, you now know how powerful you are. And um, I've got all the backlog of videos on how to work your energy centers to support each other so that when you go and you open up and you connect with frequencies, you are like enough of a personal powerhouse that you don't lose yourself, you don't space away. And that when you are ready to receive messages with our Learn to Receive Messages program, as when you open up, you know how to invite the frequencies in without, you know, fear of, oh, you know, what if it's a bugaboo or this or that. So we've accomplished, I think, a lot together. And I'm really proud of all of us. Um, the thing now is, what are we going to do going forward? You know, this stuff, uh, it's wonderful, it's amazing, and how awesome do we all feel that we've gone through this experience together. But this is like the basic stuff. We have things waiting for us. You know, the librarians, the Akashic Record librarians mandated me not just to be a spokesmodel for them, <laughs> but to teach anyone who wants how to do anything that I can do. This is why I have, like literally since I was a child, wherever I go, very sacred divine people, or sometimes physical, sometimes non-physical, find me and teach me stuff. Whether they were aware of their um, desire to do so or not, or the reason behind it, you know, that was across the board, but divine sacred people have always felt compelled to teach me things. And I have always been connected to non-physical divine sacred beings to come forward and share things with me. That's not for me, that's for us. So if you ever see me do anything that you wish you could do it, let me know, I'll teach you. That is why I'm here. You know, that is how I am here to support humanity as we grow and evolve. So um, having said that, now that we got this basic stuff, we're ready to move on to a next layer, a next layer, a next layer. And um, I'm not 100% sure what that will be, but which is part of why I'm taking the rest of July off so that I can, one, finish writing my book. A few months ago, some friends and I all agreed we were gonna write our books. And now I talk with my friends and they're like, oh yeah, I finished my book or oh, I'm writing a chapter a day. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of live streams. Ah. So I need to focus on um, my book called are you ascending to master? And this is a book about my, uh, and this isn't a channeled book. This is one is written by me, which is why I'm so like slow and lazy <laughs> with writing it. But it's about my experiences of opening up and seeing my epiphanies of, oh, that's why I can do this. And oh, I thought everyone could do that. And, and also, people who have come to me, don't worry, I'm not giving away anyone's names or identities without, unless they like ask me to, uh, about people who come to me saying, I don't understand how this is happening, that how that's happening. If like a hundred people come to me experiencing the same shift, 
then we know that there's a lot of people experiencing this and it would be good to have in the book. So it's anecdotal, interesting to read, going to be under 100 pages. You know, my books are skinny and it'll be uh, free for the first two weeks or I think 10 days it's out. And then after that, it'll be like, you know, the cheapest that Amazon allows me to sell it at. Um, so then when I'm done with that, I'll, you know, with everything shifting and the frequencies, I don't really know, but I know that I'm becoming connected. Um, and this is in the book since September, my soul and I have become more and more connected not just with visiting with each other and checking in like we've always done, but in full alignment. So just as my past lives are always with me, so I always got my, you know, my gang that's always hanging out. Now every aspect of my soul is there all the time. And it took me like from September to now to even start being comfortable talking about it, you know, like, it's a weird thing. And because I'm still on my human path with my human karma and everything, yet at the same time, there is this powerful divine situation that is always with me. And I was very clear, I'm not willing to lose myself to become some like, ooh, divine, whatever. But at the same time, I have to find a balance there so that the stuff can be in me the way it needs to be. Um, and if anything I said sounds at all familiar to you, like your guides, your past lives, your angel, your soul is like more with you now than before. I think this is a part of what we'll be working on starting in August, like aligning with your full state of being while still maintaining your individual persona and being able to live your karmic experiences on your life path while also being one with um, your higher frequency path for full planetary healing on every frequency from the most dense 3D to the highest frequency that we're bringing into the planet. So <laughs> that's why this is the final harness your inner fire, but don't worry, <laughs> we got good stuff coming up for us. Um, okay. It is hot and muggy today. All right, so today, though, is, um, oh, hi, Kit, thank you. Yeah, it's going to be really exciting, really exciting. Um, so today, we're going to do one of my favorite meditation practices. You know, a lot of times when we open up for energy, we ground into earth, and then we open up our crown to receive. And the reason we do this is it's really easy for us to ground. We're used to that. Our feet are on the ground all the time. We're part of earth. And most of us, you know, when we open to divine, we end up floating away. You know, that's the old, you know, when you're in a guided meditation and then you realize that you were like spaced out for a big percentage of it. Um, so learning to ground is getting a big part of our, getting our structural integrity. However, grounding to receive divine is only half of the flow. When you get super, super comfortable with being one with your structure, you develop the ability to be not grounded and not flowing above, just like your own little bubble and that's like a major step towards like um, astral projecting or, I mean, not that you release the connection that's always there, but if you can have the ability to put yourself in a fully maintaining sphere of energy. So you're complete within your soul structure. 
Um, and remember, Desda Zuckerman, um, who does uh, Sacred Anatomy, is like the global expert on this. And um, Jean-Marie Klitzner, uh, who I have live streamed with, um, and some of you know her personally, is like, she works with Desda and studies directly with her. Jean-Marie is like my go-to person for this. She's amazing. So if you're interested in learning more about this, check out Desda Zuckerman's uh, live workshop. She does a lot of free stuff and she does stuff that is actually a really, really fair price for online workshops. Uh, I've taken some of her workshops and even though the way she works is not the way I work because I'm usually like way out there and she's fully within here-ish, she is amazing and brilliant and everything she says and does is the real deal. So if you get to the point where you're able to be complete with yourself, you don't need the training wheels of grounding to earth in order to maintain your structure and your awareness, then you can take your little sphere of fully aware and aligned energy and go to other dimensions, go anywhere. And um, you can astral project on this planet or you can go to other planets, other timelines, other dimensions. Um, so keep on with these studies because that kind of stuff is waiting for you. And it's super fun. Um, you know, rule number one with all of that is everything you receive, you accept. Because you start seeing things, you're like, man, this is weird. This has got to be some sort of kind of crazy dream. What's a dream? <laughs> so, um, so the other thing is when we're grounded, getting back, sorry, that was like a little segue, unintended. Uh, when we're grounded and we open up our crown, we're bringing in divine energy, cosmic energy, angelic energy, ascended master energy, interdimensional energy into earth. And that is helping lighten up the frequency here. Um, like, you know, I'm a retired chef. So if I'm making a cake that you whip the egg whites separately. So you whip the egg whites into a beautiful meringue and then you have the egg yolks and the milk and the dry ingredients and the butter here whipped here and it's very, very dense. So we got like angelic energy here, earth energy here. If you take all of the egg whites and put it in and whip it into the heavy batter, what will happen is they have trouble mixing together and you end up with like some of that beautiful meringue ends up turning into like just back to egg yolk with liquid sugar and the whole thing kind of falls flat. So in as a chef, what we do is it's called sacrificing some of the meringue. So you take like one whisk full of meringue and you put it in the batter and you whisk it this small amount will emulsify and integrate with the batter, which lightens up the overall batter texture. So then when you put in the rest of the meringue and whisk it in, it raises up in volume and you end up with a very beautiful light batter. There's a little culinary technique for you. I use that when I make pancakes, FYI. Fantastic. Um, as well as other things, of course. Um, so I mentioned that because what have the angels been doing with us? What have all the divine been doing with us? They have been, when we ground to earth and we open our crown and they send the energy through us, they're sacrificing the meringue. You know, they are sending some energy to us that lightens up. You know, you ever, it's, oh, I'm dense, I'm dense, I'm dense. There's so much anger and hate and physical reality, very compressed energy. And we send in little driplets and well, maybe I'm not quite so dense. Maybe I'm a little bit light, a little lighter, a little lighter. And then, oh, whoppa, <laughs> we can, uh, we can get a whole lot of energy at once with what's happening on our planet right now, that is happening. Having said that, that's only one part of the energy 
equation. The other part is like, what about the nature spirits, the shamanic spirits, you know, the animal spirit guides, crystals, plant energy, water energy, elemental energy, all of that is very, very high frequency and it's already in our planet, okay? So you got these like very light frequency, light being, divine being sending as much energy as they can they don't have a lot of experience with dense energy, right? So they're doing their best, but it's a little bit like shooting darts when you're blindfolded. They're doing their best. That's why we become living targets here. Send the dart here. But if we make use of the high frequency, but earth resonance, like it's a denser energy, but very high vibing magic, earth magic that's already here and we send it up then all of these very light beings are like oh this here i'm going to grab this i'm going to and then shoot it straight down it powers everything up first of all it helps them because they can find us and really like instead of shooting little darts you know they can open up portals and downpour tons of light energy that really helps with our planetary issues. Secondly, you know, they're not just doing all this to help us. It helps them too. It helps everyone. So um, what they're doing is they're like, oh, here's a resonance I never had before because I'm so busy being light and airy. And whenever I touch earth energy, it's too much. I fall apart. You know, that's how like one way angels become demons. They get stuck here and they become corrupted by our very dense frequency. So if we're sending the highest vibration of earth magic up to them, they can touch that. They can connect with it and it gives them more resonance. So instead of just being light beings, it helps them to become light magical beings, right? They end up getting a little more yin yang balance going with them. So instead of us being caught in the middle of the yin yang experience, we all end up becoming integrated within ourselves. So today for our final lesson, we are going to take earth energy and bring it up through us to the angels. Um, time is, oh, perfect. Then how's my battery? Perfect. Everything is perfect. So um, I really recommend every one of you uh, find a Kundalini practice, be it online these days is safer. But Kundalini is like a fully encompassing, you know, just like the Prana Shakti I do. You have Kundalini yoga, sound and vibrational healing meditation, mantras, chanting, diet, lifestyle, you know, theological lessons. Kundalini is a full practice, really, really beautiful. And it works wonderfully with pretty much everything out there that's good and loving and light, you know, or kind. It's a very kind practice. Um, I know a lot of people have said before, once they start Kundalini, it like powers up their sexual energies and they don't go from there. <laughs> They're like, oh, I'm just going to say here, it's awesome. Yeah, but that's like saying, I'm just going to deal with this one tiny bit and ignore everything else. It is all awesome. If you think that bit is awesome, wait till you get the chakras outside of your body Kundalini charged up. It is unbelievable. Or wait till you feel that you are energetically sending energy this way, which is way more powerful than this way. If straight up and down was the most powerful, then we wouldn't have coiled ropes, right? It's the waving and integration that gets the energy really, really going. So the energy work you're doing now, be it channeling or runes or meditation, whatever, once you get that flowing energy, 
Yes, <laughs> it is. Soul is a structural integrity that we are claiming <laughs> for ourselves. Um, so for today, um, I want to give you a little preface and then we'll just go into the meditation. Remember, earth magic is super, super powerful. It's super potent. It is as powerful as the angelic, you know, and cosmic energy, but it's more potent because it's compressed. Remember that. So when you tap into it, you may find you'll have to go back and watch this meditation a few times because you can get as lost in this as spacing away there. The other thing, if we're in the meditation and you're thinking about like your to-do list or an argument you had with someone, release it, let it go, stay with the meditation. But if you're in the meditation and like an animal comes up to you and says, come with me, or a crystal starts singing to you, go with them, enjoy it. You know, you can always come back and watch the video of this again and again. But how often do you get a magical being or an environment come and claim you to share a sacred lesson with you? They've just been waiting for your frequency to get to the right place so that they could connect with you. If this brings you to that situation, always, always, always go with any divine being who's here for your benevolent well-being, go with them, always. Okay, oh, look, my third eye lit up again. <laughs> and my brow chakra is very shiny. <laughs> All right. Um, so, at this moment, let's do it. Give yourself permission to relax and flow with energy. Give your feet permission to relax. All the energy that's in your feet is welcome to flow down into earth. And you'll notice immediately, very naturally, instinctively, your legs relax and the energy in your legs flows down into your feet where it flows down deep into earth where our beloved Gaia, Pakamama, is there ready to receive all the energy you have to give transmute it into the highest frequency of love and send it out to all of your earth brothers and sisters in the planet and of the planet. You'll notice all the energy in your body relaxes and flows down through your legs, through your feet, deep into earth. top of your head naturally, instinctively opens up. Your crown chakra opens. All the beautiful divine energy from the angels, from the light beings flow into the light and airy top of your head. Filling your mind, flowing down through your neck, your shoulders, your spine, your body, down through your hips, your legs, your shins, your calves, through your feet, down through the bottom of your feet, deep into earth. As you open up and you're flowing, 
let your awareness also flow around through your body. If you find any areas that feel uncomfortable, cramped, queasy, stressed, sharp, painful, acknowledge them. Give them permission to join with this experience, to receive the love, to receive the flowing energy and the light, airy feeling. Let them know work can stay for later. For now, we relax and we flow. Feel the tendrils of energy as they ruminate through your being. If you bring your awareness to the area above the top of your head, you'll notice that you have a column or a line of energy flowing through you. You may even see it flowing around you. It may be as delicate as a thread coming in through the top of your head and down through your body below you. Or you may feel like you are in the center of a large cylinder that is ever flowing. It's all good and perfect. You bring your awareness above the top of your head. You will see not just the light, but orbs of energy, or they may look like cones of energy, like you're looking up through the bottom side of an ice cream cone. These are your chakras that are outside of your physical body. You have them both above and below your being. Your chakras go all the way from your physical body on up to your soul, even beyond. And they go all the way down your physical body, through your physical body below, all the way deep into earth, to the core of earth, where we connect with Gaia, our divine sacred mother, the creator of all physical life. Let your awareness just flow through these chakras, through the energy line. You may find one area feels more comfortable to you, or you may wish to stay closer to your physical body. If you'd like, you can keep your major awareness close to your body, but like sending a sparrow out and send a moment of your awareness, your comprehension up, 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 or down, 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 just to scope out ahead. How many beautiful chakras you have. How far they extend. For now, you may just relax with this awareness of your glorious extended energy and know that every one of these chakras outside of your body is as much a part of you 
as the ones inside your body. As powerful, as effective, just in a different frequency. A different effect or purpose as each chakra is unique and special. Invite your soul, your guardian angel, all of your non-physical guides and mentors, your soul family, any one of the non-physical who knows you and love you, invite them to come close to your Hara line, this line of energy. Wherever along there, whichever chakras they feel drawn to, wherever, invite them to come close and just vibe with your energy. You may feel like it's you radiating out to them, or you may feel like it's a two-way connection. You may feel your energy in your body lighting up Now bring your awareness back into your body. And down, down below your feet into earth. Keep your concentration, your focus, your awareness of self that you can feel as you're moving down your energy field, down your Hara line, from the light beings on down into your body and then down below your body into earth. You can feel it is all equally good, sacred and divine. It's got this powerful, magical resonance to you to it like like you have walked into an ancient magical crystalline cave you can feel the frequency you can feel how you are cradled in your divine mother's embrace supported by all the elements of earth magic let your awareness flow down your hara line to as deep into earth as you are comfortable. It may be at your feet, it may be below your feet. Wherever you go, you can feel the beautiful ancient magic of earth coming in and supporting you. You can feel the tendrils of this magic, like, like vines of the most gorgeous trumpeting flower coming over and wrapping around your energy column, around your Hara line, blooming around your chakras. It may actually look like a plant. It may look to you like crystals growing. It may look like light or look like another, feel like another, sound like another situation. Either way, you can feel the power of earth coming and supporting you, integrating with your base, your base energy, the energy below your root chakra and up to your root chakra. You can feel your root chakra expanding with this energy, becoming powerful, potent, palpable. 
as the song of earth integrates with your frequency. Invite it in, invite it in up through your root chakra, up through the bottom of your feet, up through your ankles, your shins and your calves, up through your knees, vital earth energy flowing up through your thighs to your hips encapsulating your entire root chakra with this energy flowing up fingers of energy, vines of energy, integrating with your root chakra, powering your base connection to our beautiful earth. energy flowing and rising, rising up. This energy is now in your body. If you'd like, you can just relax and let it all rise up of its own accord. Or you can bring in your Kundalini style technique and invite the energy to coil into three, or if you'd like more, lines of energy. One line is flowing directly up through your body. Another line is flowing up to your right side from your root chakra to your sacral. And another line is flowing up from your left side around your, the outside of your root chakra to your left side and then up to your sacral. Invite the energy, one line flowing up through all your chakras and two lines coiling around each chakra meeting at the bottom of one, the top of the one below, the bottom of the next, crossing over, going around the next. Where these lines of energy are going around your chakra, they are also radiating in so that each chakra is surrounded by and filled from the core going outward and flowing up to the perimeters flowing around and emanating in. So let the energy rise up from your root chakra straight up through the core of your sacral and let the energy rise up around each side of your sacral so that it all meets at the top of your sacral. Let it stay there for a moment as you feel the energy rising, surrounding, radiating in. This earth energy that you're bringing up is powering your chakras so that your chakras then can radiate out with great, bright intensity. Let yourself focus for a moment on just your root and your sacral chakra and this writhing, powerful energy, charging up your chakra system and then let the chakra glow outward. Now bring the same energy and focus, continuing it up to your solar plexus chakra, flowing straight up and around. So it meets at the top of the solar plexus, the bottom of the heart, and let the energy flow, rest for a moment while you focus on your solar plexus, power it up. Let the energy earth magic naturally power up your solar plexus when it's ready you will feel it 
expand and glow and join with your powerful root chakra, your powerful sacral, now your powerful solar plexus. You can feel the intensity of these lower chakras becoming one writhing powerhouse of unique energy centers powering up together into one as well, maintaining their individual personas while flowing together as one giant energy sphere. Just naturally sends the energy straight up through and surrounding your heart chakra. You may find with the heart chakra being three energy centers, the Kundalini energy may treat it as one, or it may be writhing all around each of the three. Let the energy come to the top of your heart chakra. Just watch as it does whatever it does. Honor the way your heart chakra is choosing to work with you in this Kundalini flow. Be very aware of all the energy rising up, all the energy rising up. When you are ready, invite the energy to expand out. Earth's energy, powering your chakra energy to glow and integrate with your powerhouse very active lower chakras. The energy rides up to your throat chakra. You can feel immediately the energy knows what it's doing. It's flowing up through your throat, wrapping around your throat to the top of it, sending earth energy into your throat and claiming it as one lit up powerhouse. goes on up to your third eye, flowing around your third eye, through your third eye, lighting up, rising up to your crown chakra, which immediately opens up. Tremendous power and authority. And the energy rides up through your horror line above your crown chakra, above your body. It rides up to your next chakra up, the one or you very easily connect with your guardian angel. And the energy flows up, flows up. Each chakra, the higher you go from your body, they are lighter, but with this kundalini energy rising up, giving power, they gain structural integrity. Each of your guides, your guardians, on up to your soul that is there connecting with your chakras, is receiving this energy. Give yourself a moment to continue rising up, to continue rising up, feeling your flowing multi-directional connections as you wrap around each chakra higher and higher. 
as high as you are comfortable getting on your way up to your soul. Invite the energy from Earth to keep flowing up in as many directions and tendrils as it sends through your body, through your chakras, powering up each along the way. Invite Earth energy. Invite whomever you're connected to in Earth at this moment. The crystals, the animals, the soil, the elements, the plants, the fire, Gaia. Invite whomever you're connected to. Just do a big push and send a bunch of energy up from Earth through these beautiful coiled wrapping flowing tendrils of energy up through your body through your chakras on up through the top of your head through your higher up chakras through your heart line as high up as it can go and then out like a beautiful firework fountain Following an explosion like that, you find yourself very naturally flowing back into yourself, flowing back into your body and your awareness. And this energy flow we've been working with, the imprints are in you. They will not go away. You have activated. You have turned levers from off to on. They are there. And as you return to self, you can feel, you can feel you've grown something in yourself. You have literally turned yourself on. So give yourself a moment just get back into your body. Back into your awareness. You have some water or something. If you're welcome to drink a little bit now. Water helps the energy to settle. I welcome you back. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you guys, please feel welcome to share any comments or questions. Uh, so I know like how that was for you. I know how that was for me. I had a blast. <laughs> but here's the thing. If this was an amazing experience, just think this is like the baby of what you can do. Keep practicing, keep practicing. And even though this is our final Harness Your Inner Fire um, class, um, we'll be doing more stuff. And it's all gonna be based on this. It's all gonna grow from here. So keep practicing, practice your energy. I'll tell you, one of my favorite lifelong um, meditations that I've done, like literally since I was a baby, is when I wake up in the morning, you know, and I do all my stuff, or any time in the day I feel like I need to like center myself, what I do is I get very aware of all the energy going every which direction. Like I'll just sit in meditation, 
and I'll feel like, oh, energy is going here, it's going, and I'll just bring all of the energy together like a rope or like a woven structure going up. All of the energy that's going this way, that way, my focus is here, my, you know, mosquito bite is bugging me here, you know, where I bruise myself is there. Like we scatter our energy without realizing it. Kundalini rising, shooting fires. I know, I love that. But we scatter our energy without even realizing it. So you bring it all into alignment. And for me, usually I'll bring it as a rope. I'll just send the rope up to my soul. Because my soul, you know, the more my soul is connected with me, the more I can get really, really good guidance. And I need that. <laughs> We all do. Or uh, you can imagine it all together as a flowing waterfall down into earth. You know, just like a flowing active energy, not just a column of light, which is a little bit stagnant and like enforced, you know, but I'll do like a rope or vines growing up together, uh, you know, or you know, something flowing down. It's amazing how once you get your energy flowing together, but honoring each tendril of energy as a unique resonance, you can start going, oh, wow, I didn't realize I was still focusing on this. Or I see this line of focus kind of goes nowhere. What if I cook it to that? Now it's effective. So this is like really, really, um, uh, like, I forget who among you all at one point said you were told that Kundalini is dangerous. Yes, because it's powerful and it's empowering. And really, Kundalini is grounded in the sacred divine feminine. So, yes, yes, it's dangerous because those who do not want and the divine feminine energy is not about women. It is about nurturing and growing and evolving. It's about giving the support so things are powerful when they happen. Yes, that's especially dangerous to those who do not want you to be powerful. And, um, and it's also a reminder that you must maintain your um, personal integrity because I have, not with Kundalini, across the board, people who gain a great deal of power without the structural integrity, which is what we've been working on all these weeks. You guys, you've got your structural integrity, I promise you. People who get a great deal of power without the structural integrity, I've seen them go insane, you know, become megalomaniacal, you know, terrorists in a way, like spiritual terrorists, emotional terrorists, uh, you know, governmental official terrorists. Um, so, yes, it's dangerous if you don't honor it. But, you know, again, I'm a chef. I spent my entire, I spent 40 years moving quickly with things that can cut me and burn me on a slick surface. I know the power of dealing with dangerous things, but what did I create? amazing food that nourish people. Yeah, yeah, I got my share of scars, of course, but I never cut off a limb and I never fell into a deep fryer because I honored the structural integrity of what I was doing. So go forward with your energy work and honor this structural integrity, honor yourselves for having done this work and the fact that you'll keep on doing it. Because as we saw with the Kundalini, your awareness is inviting our earth energy, our sacred mother's energy to wrap around your chakras, but then your chakras fire up with that energy. If you then ignored the power of the sacred mother and you just claim the energy for yourself, then you'd be a power of energy with no support. That's where, you know, you know when you deny the resources and you claim it's all you that's where the madness comes in so don't do that 
<laughs> you're not going to, none of you are going to. You are going to realize the more you work this with honor of nature, of magic, of spirit, of light beings, of animal spirit guides, the more wonder and amazing adventure is calling to you. And the more you have the ability to really use the power, use the power and light up and goodness happens. This is why, you know, the good always conquers evil because when you go forward with love and respect, you will always become more and more and more powerful and you will always honor the resources and you will always like send it out for good effect because you realize you become more powerful by powering up all around you and honoring where all the power is coming from. When people claim, oh no, it's all me, it's all me, it's only me, I'm it, there's only so powerful they can get. So the love will always conquer fear, always in the long run. That's why fear wants to oppress love. It does not want love to become powerful. That's why they say things like this work we're doing is dangerous. It's not dangerous to us. It's dangerous to those who want to rule through fear. But when we open up with love, in the end, it always absorbs the fear and converts the fear to love. It's just the nature of it. So thank you guys. Thank you. This has been such a wonderful experience for me. Thank you so much for sharing your uh, spring and early summer with me. Um, and like I said, I'll take a little break, but then I'll have a awesome book for you guys to read. I, I hope awesome. I don't know. Uh, I think it'll it may not be the most well-crafted book, but it'll be interesting. How's that? <laughs> and then we will go forward together to some new adventures. Thank you so much. Spending this time with you just fills me with love. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And um, while I am taking a break, I will be doing little pop-up live streams. So... You know, if you want to check in, I can tell you tomorrow, Dr. Daryl and I are doing a Voices of Freedom um, video at two in the afternoon. And somewhere this weekend, I just learned another cool thing about my mom uh, back when she was chairman of Fair Housing. And um, so she was telling me a cool story based on her like awareness of things happening in current events in the newspaper today. I'm like, we got to live stream this mom. You were because the work she did in the uh, 1960s is very relevant to stuff happening today. So, so I'll be around just sporadic. Thank you guys. Thank you. I adore you all. And Oh man, I didn't even see all of your wonderful messages. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Oh, my God. You guys are wonderful. Thank you. Bye.